Right, so let's get into working with the DOM within the browser from our JavaScript. Now there's a few basic concepts that we really need to understand before we can do much. One of them being that all the content in the page is made up of nodes. There are 13 kinds of nodes, but for what we're going to be doing, it really comes down to about three. So we have tags, head, meta, uh, title, style, header, h1, main, h2, p. These are all element nodes. JS intro, introduction to JavaScript, loading scripts, these are text nodes. So all the content inside of here, this is a text node. Then we also have attribute nodes, but we're going to use some special methods for working with attributes. And comment nodes is the other one that you will occasionally come across, but not that often. So for us, we're going to be dealing with elements and nodes. Those are the terms that I'm going to be using throughout all of these videos. When I say node, I could be referring to elements. I could be referring to text. Both of them together, they're both nodes. These tags, these are going to be elements. I'll call them elements or element nodes. The three methods that we need to be really familiar with are get element by ID, query selector, and query selector all. These are the three ways that we have. There's a couple of others, but don't get used as much. These are the key three methods that we have for accessing the content of a web page. If you want to update this title, if you want to change the text inside of here, you need to tell JavaScript how to find that tag. So, these three methods, get element by ID and query selector, both of these return a single element node. So they'll give you back a tag, one piece of HTML, which is an element. The difference between the two of them is, get element by ID, you just pass in the ID that you're looking for. So we have an ID here, para, we've got another ID here, foot. If I wanted to, let's say, reference that chunk of HTML, we could say let foot equals, and this is not a keyword or anything, it's just the variable name that I'm picking, document dot get element by ID, and then I pass in the string, which is the ID. There we go. That would point to this footer. If I wanted to update the content inside of there, I could do that. If I wanted to target this paragraph, let's do that one. Let p equals document dot get element by ID, and it was called para. There we go. Now I can update this. Let's say I just wanted to put some text inside of this first paragraph. I can say p dot text content equals first paragraph. So I'll save it and I will run this. Use the preview. And there we are. And we can see that first paragraph was indeed set as the text inside that first paragraph. So get element by ID returned us one element and then we were able to access the text content property of that one element. Query selector say that we want to get another paragraph. So we're going to get this second paragraph right here. And we want to use the query selector method. Query selector works the same way as get element by ID in that it returns us one single element. And that one single element we can do anything we want with. It'll be put into this variable p2 and we can access any of its properties, we can change the contents of it, so on. The difference is that with query selector what we pass in is a CSS selector. So it's a string right here, dot sum, that's a CSS selector. So we can put any CSS selector we want. We could say just dot sum or we could use something a little bit uh, more verbose. We could say main p dot sum. So anything that you would use in your CSS file, any sort of CSS selector is what you can place inside of here. 
Once you have that, then you can access all of its properties and update something or read something from it. And this is our second paragraph. And here we go, second paragraph. Great. Third one, query selector all, also takes a CSS selector the same way that this one does. The difference is that with query selector, it only returns one element. It returns the first match. Query selector all gives you a node list. A node list is like an array, but every single element inside the array is a node, an HTML node. So P's is document dot query selector all and then we can put inside of here let's say main p all the paragraphs that are inside this element with the class main so all three of these are going to match this selector this is now a node list a list we can loop through so let's create a for loop Bar i equals zero, num equals ps dot length. As long as i is less than num i plus plus increment at the end of our loop. Now we can access each one of these the same way we would with an array. So our variable ps, which is the node list, sub i, our counter variable, text content, and what we'll do is we'll append to the end of it. So first paragraph, second paragraph, the third one is empty, but we're just going to add to that and we'll add the string looped to the end of it. There we go. Looped, looped, looped. So we targeted all three of these things. Now it's important to remember that you need to do this as a loop. If I was to try and do ps.textContent, set it to anything at all, that's not going to work. We inspect and we go to our console. There, we don't see this ASDF showing up because PS is a node list. It's not an individual piece of HTML. We're not saying change the text of all three of these things. If we want to look at each one of the ones in turn, we need to use a loop to get at each one of them. This is not going to do anything for us. You can see we don't have that text being changed. So three methods, get element by ID, query selector, query selector all, all three of them very useful in different instances to get at different pieces of our HTML. And get element by ID just takes the ID itself without the pound sign in front of it. It's not a CSS selector. It's just the name that's used as the ID. Query selector, query selector, all take CSS selectors.